Good evening, everyone. My name is Juan, and I'm the CEO with uh, DarwinX, which is a marketplace that pairs uh, independent traders or asset managers with investors. And you're probably thinking, so why would anyone even want to do that? Well, uh, I'll show you how we do that, but before that, on to the why. So the reason we do that is because retail investing is really stuck in the industrial age. It's, it got frozen about 150 years ago, and it stayed way back there, even in 2015. I will not get too much into the detail, but uh, there are things that are fundamentally wrong with the way that collective investment works. So uh, there are pretty renowned hedge funds that, uh, to, to whom it cost about 2,500 pounds to clear one trade. Now, because they're using technology which is way outdated, they need to have a, a guy at the front office whose incentive is to screw the risk management system so that he can make some bonus for himself by taking more risk than he's allowed. So you need an army of people in the middle office who are just looking to find ways in which the, the employ, employee of that um, institutional manager can basically create a problem. So uh, you've got an issue with the, with the technology, which then creates an issue with the, with the processes, uh, with, the, with the incentives, which are, as we know, deeply flawed. And then on top of that, you have an army of processes to just you know, get money invested, which really comes down to a familiar shape you probably knew in, uh, in uh, economic school, which is industrial economics. Basically, for you to get the first customer out the door, you have a boatload of cash that has been invented and somehow needs to be put to work. So how do you go about it? Well. Essentially, you hire an army of distributors or like intermediaries that, that all have to be greased, all take a cut in the investment uh, returns that have been made by the, by the strategy. And then, you know, uh, you, you can only do that because you need to manage trillions at a time to make this huge machine work in the, um, in the first place. So what comes at the end of it, you've probably seen it in economics, well, it's called the their efficient frontier which is another way of saying when you're managing trillions at a time, it's completely impossible to make more than that. And you know, what does that leave you as a retail investor? Well, at the end of that chain, your savings are really not getting you any return whatsoever, right? So why, why save in, in, in the first place? And the other question is, well, it's 2015 and a whole bunch of other things have been invaded, so why are they still inv investing one trillion at a time? What's the whole point? And we can see their point, it's that their economics don't allow it for anything else, but from your standpoint, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Now, luckily it's 2015, so there's a whole bunch of things that have been invent invented. For instance, think of Amazon. So, 10 years ago, they came up with the, with the Kindle, uh, invented the ebook, and that was a revolution. And it, it was a revolution of sorts because th the Kindle economics are completely different. For you to ship out the first Kindle costs you the same as shipping out the one millionth Kindle. And this changes the whole game. And why is that? Well, what, what they did is to move away from a producer-centric model where some expert wrote a book that everyone got to read and there was an industry around kind of pushing those books and making them blockbusters and so on. What they did was say, well, let's make our customers our producers. So let's allow, of course, the experts to continue sh uh, selling books, but also allow everyone read, uh, review, and write the, the books. And hoopala, what happened there? Well, the long tail was invented, and it seems to work. And this is, a, like, for me, this was a flabbergasting fact. 43% of Amazon sales you can find anywhere else, but 57% of those, they're actually not av uh, available anywhere else. Why is that? Well, because, uh, and this is another f a fact, about 98% of Kindle books sell one copy. Amazing. So what do we do? Well, it's actually we do the same thing. So DarwinX is an exchange that allows anyone to trade through us. So on the one hand, we're a broker, and when you come trade with our broker, we will take your strategy and we'll list it as a, a new asset that we call a Darwin, which really is an, an exchange-traded fund, you can think of it that way, that comes with a price. So you can buy, say, uh, you know, Petra strategy down here for an initial listing price of 100. When you do so, you are replicating whatever trades Petra has got on. And when you're, whenever you're making money using the intellectual property that Petra is allowing you to, so to say, free ride on, then we, as an FCA-regulated portfolio manager, charge the investor a 20% success fee, and we pay the trader 75% of that, which de facto amounts to making the trader a hedge fund manager from home and bypassing all that madness. So why does it work? Well, 
to begin with, all the profits are aligned. So the trader is trading his own money. He's got every incentive to make money on that money. And the, he's only getting paid from everyone else if he makes a profit on that. So the incentives, alongside the technology, are completely aligned. So the whole issue of the, the economics is, is, gone, is gone away. It's better to fix a problem than throw more resources at it. And then people tell me, yeah, sure. 99% of those guys, they don't make any money. So what's the point of investing in them? Well, so sure, there's absolutely no point in investing in them, just as 99% of Kindle books are only read by the guy who wrote them. But that doesn't mean that 100% of them are bad. If you have tools the way we have that allow you to spot the 0.1% who are actually making money in a consistent basis. And what we've got there is the three years worth of cash burned invested into algorithms to identify people who are making money through skill in a way such that if you go to DarwinX and you see high grades for all these six criteria, we give a 0 to 10 grade for all of those, we can prove to you that high skill grades on those today correlate with future profits tomorrow. So we're telling you today who's more likely to make money tomorrow. Not only that, we actually have risk management algorithms that pitch the, uh, the, the ETF in any risk you want. So Peter could copy uh, Petra's uh, ETF risking 20% the worst month every 20, and John down here could copy it with 5%, which means everybody from 50 pounds can invest in a strategy with exactly the risk he wants from 50 pounds. This is the kind of thing that a hedge fund for half a million will not be able to, to offer to you. Because you personally set your monthly losses the worst month every, uh, every 20. So, you know, to come back to what this is all about, I, if there's one thing I want you to remember, it's like if you're thinking of investing your own money, what is the better way to invest? To go to one guy, one expert who invests one billion in one strategy that reaches you after 55 middlemen have taken their cut? or take your money and split it up into 1,000 independent managers who really are trying hard to prove to you that they're worth your money, and they're all uncorrelated from each other, which means they're all fighting hard, and they're also, they're also uncorrelated to both themselves and, and the market. So, you know, this, this is not just a fact. I can prove to you that if you had invested in the top investment strategies that we have, and remember that we're talking about the 0.1%, but then we also give you the magnet to filter the, the haystack, you would see that uh, in the last two years, a portfolio investing every night into those traders that our algorithms say are investable for the next day, this is what you would have made. Risking in every individual strategy a 10% loss the worst month every 20. So what you see is they made a cumulative 50% return, which is mind-boggling, but even more mind-boggling is the losses that you had here. So the worst peak to trough drawdown, as the traders call it, that you had in the whole process, which would have been maybe here or here, is 6%. So in each of those guys, you're risking about the same risk as the FTSE. And collectively, there's further diversification, so even risking about half what the FTSE would have had in the worst month in, in, in here. Sure, a lot of people tell me, yeah, these are micro strategies and they will not scale beyond a couple of million assets under management. And that's exactly right. But that's fine. The, the, the trader will have like 50,000 of his own equity in there and he's more than um, looking forward to have another 2 million of your money to give you the kind of returns that uh, are denied to you by an industry stuck in the 19, 1980s at best. So, you know, if there's one piece of advice I can give you, hurry and uh, join before we go so big and we have the one trillion problem. If you sign up to DarwinX with this code, with NF100, you will be able to jump the queue uh, that is currently waiting to invest because we're currently in a closed beta and uh, we will go live uh, July-ish. So thank you very much. I, I look forward to any questions you might have now. Questions for one. Uh, how do you protect against, I guess, the uh, reverse gambler's rune problem, where uh, if somebody puts out a thousand strategies, one week, 500 of them will do well, then they put out the same strategy again, and the next week, 250 do well. Um, a, how do you prevent against that? And B, have you seen any sort of attempts to uh, game the system in such a way? Yeah, okay. So we have a, that's a very good question, and that's the, the, the first one that got us going. So you, you see, 
this bit here. So w the thinking was to say, we call them lucky monkeys. So if you put 50,000 lucky monkeys to trade this week, then 50 of those monkeys are bound to have done very well uh, for, a, for a week. Now, the one thing those lucky monkeys will never do is to prove skill. OK, so this is where these algorithms come in. So I, we can prove to you that a, the lucky monkey would make money, but he would not impress, the, impress these algorithms, whereas the trader who knew what he was doing uh, would, would have a high grade. We've put two, two years' worth of investment to uh, avoid exactly that problem. But it's a very good question, because without that, it's just a statistical fluke. It's a, it's a waste of everyone's money. So I'm assuming you're tracking those algorithms that how, how they're performing. Yeah. I'm assuming they would perform better over time as you start to evaluate more data. Um, so what yeah. I'm going to ask is, do you display that, uh, or do you kind of you know, tell it to the, cons to the investors how those algorithms are performing in detecting the best traders? Sure. So uh, it's not online yet, but uh, one thing we will do is allow you to build your own back tests. So basically define your own filters in terms of these criteria or any other statistical criteria which is uh, observable from outside for you to see how that would have performed over time. So you can decide for yourself. Do you have a current metric that you can tell us, for example, how it's performing. Like, uh, yeah. So we or? yes. So 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 we do. Um, so the, the performance indicator here is doing exactly as you said. So basically, one thing we do is benchmark the performance by this strategy against ten thousand random monkeys, and we see on a relative basis how many random monkeys it's beating. And both that one and the timing, which checks whether the trader could have made any more money by joining systematically earlier or, uh, or exiting systematically earlier the, the, the trades, those two are very, very strongly predictive of future profits. So if you, if you put your money on those two, I think you'll, 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 you'll do well. Hi. Um, there were a couple of issues. I had a quick look at your site today, having uh, seen you were doing your thing today. Sure. I mean, there's a couple of issues to do with the fact that it is based on Forex, which is a really highly leveraged thing. And it is dependent on getting hold of traders, which wasn't evident to me you'd be able to do that. But just on one minor point you just mentioned there with, with the analysis part, the risk, is that another level on top of the trader's trading? So you're saying that the trader will do his trading, whatever he's doing, yeah. and you're going to add a risk level on top of that, to actually, which could actually alter his trading. Yep. So how, okay. would, how would you get around that issue? So, so very good point. So I'm, I'm actually an, an avid uh, motorbike driver and a glider pilot. And people tell me that's crazily risky. And I go, well, there is a risk to it, but it's as risky as you want to make it in the, the first place. So uh, right now we, are, we, are, we have started offering for an exchange, not because it's high risk or anything, but because it's the most liquid market in the world and it's open 24 hours a day. So you can hedge any risk anytime. That's the reason we're doing it. In terms of the leverage, that the way it works is the trader is trading his own money with his own risk, which, which is nothing to do with the risk that you're taking as an investor. In fact, I could show you about 20 strategies that are losing money on the trader's account and are making money on our risk management algorithms. So the only thing you're replicating from the trader is the timing, when to go into the trades and when to go out of the trades. The leverage decisions are done by our risk management algorithms. So what you've got really is a human or an algorithm making the timing decisions and an independent third party controlling the risk on behalf of the investors. Right. That, you, you, there are a few points of what you made. I mean, you can't really hedge the Forex. The, the Forex is the Forex. Who says that? Well, how would you hedge the Forex position? Well, if a guy's uh, gone into a position to make a, a profit, how would you hedge that off? No, you, you cannot hedge that off, right. but, but you know it's liquid so that when you want to get out of the position, and I'm not saying you can always get out of that position, right. but it's, you're much, much better off getting out, out of a position in the euro dollar yeah. than you are in getting out of a, like a very but liquid stock. Oh, okay, thank you. That's liquidity, okay. But I'm still trying to understand your little risk level on top of the trader strategy, because yes. if he's come up with a strategy which he reckons can win... Yeah, sure. So no, but, but if the, you had another level, how do you... So the gist happen? of it is the trader takes his own decision on, with his own leverage, and we have an independent risk management engine, uh, engine which on the basis of the historical patterns for the, for the strategy, on the volatility prevailing in the market at that time, and the correlation between all the assets that the trader has put on at that time, comes up with an independent uh, decision on, on how much leverage to take on behalf of the investors. So it, this is really the, the middle office of a hedge fund, automated.
So thank you for the presentation. I think what you have is, what you have is interesting. We have to understand the risk management, but there is another platform which is already working, which is called eToro. On top of my head, I, yeah, yeah. Other, I think eToro is one known. Yeah. How do you differentiate versus eToro? Okay, well, thank you so much because you've asked me exactly the kind of three or four questions that I wished I could, uh, I could place. <laughs> so it's, uh, thank you so much. So uh, eToro is a copy trading platform, okay? Which means uh, you place a trade, uh, you tell me what that trade is, and I go about and replicate it. Now, this is an intellectual property business. So the moment I know your trade, nothing stops me from going to another broker, and eToro is a very, very expensive broker, uh, and placing exact, that exact same trade without paying either eToro fees or paying you a success fee. We do this differently. What you're buying is not the euro dollar. What you're buying is the the, the trader himself, and there's no way, you'll, you'll have to torture me first before we tell you what the live trades are, because if you know them, you will not pay us for success. Now, if you were a good, you know, if you were George Soros, would you go tell the world today that you're going to break the pound tomorrow? I wouldn't, and I'm, I'm not half as smart as, as, as he would, so I very much doubt that the next George Soros agrees to giving away his intellectual property for free. Um, so you're quite reliant on 0.1% who you're kind of already faced into the question around yeah. 2 million might be the max that that strategy can yeah. hold. Yeah. So quite interested in how you're going to attract that 0.1% and make sure that that scales because obviously that's very reliant to pull in the right investors. Okay, well actually thank you so much because that was the one missing question. So the... the <laughs> The, the, the one thing that makes all this possible is that 15 years ago, the only way for you to do this was to go work for a bank. So all the money by the world by, was managed by, say, tens, and, tens of thousands of people. Now today, if you're a smart engineer in China uh, with an internet connection, nothing stops you from joining the markets. And basically that, that increases the talent pool by a factor of... I dare say like a thousand fold. So there were, if there were tens of, thousand, ten, tens of thousands of people doing this uh, kind of 10 to 15 years ago working for banks, now there's tens of millions and it's growing by about 20% a, a year. So the, the, the talent pool has increased tenfold. That's one point. And the second point is because we are the only intermediary and we don't have to feed 55 intermediaries between the guy who makes the calls and the guy who makes the investments, we can afford to pay more to both the investor and the guy making the calls. So if you work for a hedge fund today, on a good year, you'll take home about, say, 20% of whatever profit you have generated for investors. On a bad year, you're fired. And you have to have a boss, you have to have a 95 job, and so on and so forth. With us, all you do is you stay home, you trade your monies, and you get 75% of the cut. This is an important point. So, so they're taking home 75% of the profits, which is a payout ratio that no hedge fund could ever possibly even think of, of matching. Okay, thank you very much, Juan. Thank you. Thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you.